Well, occasionally, New Jersey residents who go to sell their homes make a surprising discovery in the deeds and paperwork filed decades ago that can be a disturbing reminder of the history of discrimination faced by African Americans and other minorities. For Black History Month, News 12's Brian Donahue took a look at the lasting legacy of so-called racial covenants. I'm on Wayne Avenue in the Bergen County town of River Edge, where, like many people across New Jersey, residents are unaware of a disturbing fact about their neighborhood. It says no persons of any race other than the Caucasian race shall use or occupy any building or any land. It's incredible. These homes, including Suzanne Lyon's home, were built decades ago for white people only. It's found in the deed filed in 1940 for a large section of a 100-acre family farm. John Pell Zabriskie, a former mayor of River Edge, and his brother Jesse were selling to a developer who would build many of these homes. A clause that reads, no person of any race other than the Caucasian race shall use or occupy any building or lot. There's an exception only for domestic servants. I, I would like to say I'm really surprised, but in fact, I'm probably not that surprised just because of, of, you know, kind of what things were like back then. There is sadly nothing unique about this neighborhood or River Edge in particular. Here's another deed from a track of undeveloped land being sold in Ramsey in 1948. It reads, no person of the Negro blood or race shall be permitted to own, rent, or occupy any part of said premises. Such racial covenants were common across New Jersey on large developments and individual homes alike, from Cape May to Sussex County throughout the first half of the 20th century. So we could be the maid. <laughs> we would be the, the help. Maria Doherty is half Irish, half Filipino. Her husband is black. She took in the news that her family would not have been allowed to live in her home when it was first built. <sighs> Like seeing that and, and knowing that, you know, we live here now, I think it's, you know, we've come a long way, right? Like Such covenants were struck down by a Supreme Court decision in 1948. But by then, Laura Sullivan with the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice says these practices, along with redlining by banks and other policies, had taken their toll. That it's really important that people know um, that our policies have helped uh, predominantly white families build wealth. Um, while creating barriers uh, to those same opportunities for, for black families and other families of color. Across broad swaths of suburban New Jersey, black families were locked out of that source of wealth, a prime reason why today the median net worth for black families is just $6,000 compared to $300,000 for white families. And the policies um, that we had 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, about going back to the foundation of our state with slavery, are still having impacts. So for Black History Month, a reminder from the forgotten pages of the past of how that shameful history continues to echo forth today. Brian Donahue, News 12, New Jersey. Really sad. Well, certainly a reminder of how much progress we've made and how much work still needs to be done.